in Order. helping more people into work, as well as providing substantial savings for the taxpayer. Question number five, Grant Robertson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. Does he stand by all his statements? Ah, the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yes, in the context in which they were made. Uh -huh. yeah, yes, indeed. Can he a uh, supplementary question? Grant Robertson. Can he confirm, in light of his statements on economic growth, that today's quarterly GDP figures show the weakest growth in a quarter since the beginning of 2015? Uh, the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Yes, that all the way back to 2015, that is the slowest over that period. The good news, as I said to the member before, we've had positive economic growth in every quarter except one for the last six years. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Can he not see that growth dropping in sectors such as agriculture, forestry, fishing, manufacturing, transport and telecommunications point to long-term problems for the productive part of the economy that's actually needed to drive living standard increases in New Zealand? The Honourable well, Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, gosh, I think the member just insulted the other half of the New Zealand economy by suggesting it wasn't productive. That's health services, scientific services, business services, tourism sector, uh, the, um, the construction sector. All of those are apparently not productive, according to Mr Robertson. But actually, uh, I suggest that he goes and has a read of some of the commentary around the quarterly figures, which showed that the drop in primary production, which flowed into... Uh, manufacturing was likely a result of the wet spring conditions that affected production levels. But he's welcome to press the alarm bells as he does on an, on an ongoing basis. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Is he concerned about a 4% fall in exports, given that growing exports is actually meant to be one of the major goals of his government? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, uh, the member has to be careful with his train spotting of quarterly figures, Mr Speaker. The simple reality is that despite the downturn in the dairy industry over the last two years, that New Zealand exports have risen. And in fact, in the 2016 calendar year, uh, they rose over that period. So the member has got to be careful, well, if, well it's up to him, but um, in terms of quarterly figures, uh, because quarterly figures do move around quite a bit. The good news for the member is that our current account deficit is one of our lowest, at less than 3%, so we're paying our way in the world. And in fact, our internal, international net liability is down to 55%, Mr Parker. And back when you were in government, it was 85% of New Zealand's GDP. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Is he prepared to do anything differently, given that per person the New Zealand economy went backwards in this quarter, is growing by less than 1% in a year, or will he just continue to complacently rely on population growth and speculation in the housing market to prop up the economy? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, the member needs new talking points. Uh, because the New Zealand economy is one of the fastest growing economies in the developed world, and our purchasing power, as pointed out by Statistics New Zealand in a statistic that Mr Robertson used to love but has now conveniently forgotten, real growth national disposable income, has shown that New Zealanders purchasing power has grown solidly over the last year as a result of our improving external position and our improving economy. Now, again, the member is absolutely entitled to ignore all of that and say that we're heading to hell in a handbasket, but I think most New Zealanders would disagree. Uh, Question number six, Simon O'Connor. 